We're going to do one more behavioral effect before we move on to the brain. Um, and I want to remind you of this question that came up before. When we were thinking at the level of computational theory, what is the nature of the problem that we're solving in visual recognition, in this case in face recognition? One of the key things that makes it hard is that the input for each individual you're going to recognize is highly variable. There's an infinite number of different pixel arrays, any of which you could look at and say, that's Julia Roberts, and an infinite number that could be flashed up to you, and you could look at them and say, that's Brad Pitt, OK? And so that's a hard problem. You go try writing the code to do that. Like, that's how you see. What, that's what it means by hard problem. It doesn't mean it feels like you look at it, you go, oh, who is that? I don't know. Is it Julia? No, it doesn't feel like that. Your brain does it like this. It's not hard in that sense. It's easy for you because you have this special machinery that does it. What's hard about it is thinking about what would be involved in trying to write the code to do that, right? And you'd be up a bit against a real problem. OK. So we considered two possible ways the brain and mind might contend with this problem. One is, well, maybe you just memorize lots of different ways the same person looks. That seems like a really stupid solution, like the brute force, dumb, store everything, compute nothing solution. It seems ludicrous, but as I'll show you in a moment, actually there's some evidence for it. The alternative, bless you, um, is that is that we store not literal pixel arrays of what each person looks like, but something more abstract. For example, if we had a list of features like how far apart are the person's eyes, what is the shape of their mouth, you can imagine even a verbal description of those things you might arrive at through any of these images. And if so, then you wouldn't have to necessarily store each of those literal ones. Okay? So those are just two um, <clears throat> ends of a spectrum of kinds of ways you might represent faces. All right? So now, what do you think people do? All right. Um, oh, so one thing you might realize is that the memorization strategy is only going to work for people you already know. In fact, for people you know pretty well. Because you have to memorize all those different ways they look. And if you just met them one second ago, you've only had a few samples, right? So this whole strategy wouldn't tell us how you would, say, match two different pictures of the same person if you'd never seen them before. In fact, it would predict that you can't do that very well. Everybody get that? Because it says the only way you can deal with this image variability is just memorize it for each person individually. If you haven't met them yet and don't know the different ways they look, you don't have a way to do that. In contrast, this kind of extracts some invariant representation. In principle, you should be able to do that for two new images of somebody you've never met before. You should be able to look at those and say, same person. OK? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm getting, I don't know if this is so freaking obvious. Nobody's not nodding or because I, is it unclear? It's OK? All right. You guys should just butt in any time I'm saying anything, anything unclear. That's why we're here in the room rather than just watching the lectures offline on video. OK? All right. So, um, so this one, this idea predicts that it ought to work at least pretty well for people you don't know. You should be able to match two different images of a person you haven't met. Let's try it. So um, a guy named Jenkins did an experiment. Again, I don't care if you remember his name. I just think it's cool. I feel I need to give him credit. <laughs> OK, so a guy named Jenkins did um, a wonderful, uh, a, another simple low-tech experiment. So he collected a whole bunch of photographs of Dutch politicians. Dutch politicians, because he's doing these, this experiment, I believe, in Australia, where they didn't know those particular Dutch politicians, but we can get loads of pictures of those people uh, in all kinds of different situations off the web. So we had lots of different pictures of each of lots of different people. Okay? So then he just put them on um, cards and gave people a stack of them, talk about low tech, and said, sort these cards into piles, where each pile is a different individual. Okay? So they just get this stack of cards, and they're just sorting them into piles. Okay? Um, and then he, the key question was, how many piles do people make? That is, how many different individuals do they think are there? OK, I didn't make all the cards for you guys, but I'll show you a version of this. I'm going to show you an image. It's not on your slide. Otherwise, you would have already figured it out. and It wouldn't work as a demo. Um, I'm going to show you an image. And just look at it. Don't say anything out loud. Just look at it for, I'll give you, I don't know, five seven seconds, something like that. Scan around and see if you can get a sense of how many different individuals are there. OK? Here we go.
Okay, everybody got a sense? Okay, how many people um, think there, there are over 10 individuals in that array? Raise your hand if you think there are over 10. One, okay. Um, how many people think there are over five? Okay, looks like most of you. How many people think they're under five? One. We, we, I want to run an experiment on you later. <laughs> You'll see why. You're the only one who's right. There are two. Two individuals in the whole array. And you guys did exactly what, so you were, you were closer, right? You, you may be one of these people who's particularly good at face recognition. We'll talk about that in a few lectures. Um, you guys did exactly what Jenkins subjects did. The mean number of piles that uh, Jenkins subjects made was seven and a half. Okay? Um, and what does this mean? Let's go back and look at those images for a second. There are two people here. What it means is you are not able to take the various different pictures of the same person and realize that's the same person. You were failing to achieve invariance of your face representation. Does everybody get how this shows a failure of invariance across the image changes to realize that's the same person for an unfamiliar face? Okay? Okay, so one conclusion from this is the much hallowed human ability to achieve invariant visual recognition is not so damn good. Uh, and maybe it's done by brute force. We can do it with people we know because we see them in lots of different ways and we memorize all that stuff. And if we haven't already memorized all that stuff, it doesn't work so well. Okay? Everybody get that idea? Okay. Yeah, question. Sorry, tell me your name again. Lauren, Lauren yes. Yeah, it's good. It's a very good point. We might say 50 or something like that. Or maybe you were just kind of guessing that I wouldn't have put 50 up there. I don't know. <laughs> Lots of sources of evidence, but absolutely. If you guys had the sense of at least some of those people are the same, then you have some ability to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nonetheless, it's not very, it's not very good. Like there are many, many different pictures of the same person that you guys were, you guys and, and Jenkins subjects were estimating were different people. Okay. All right. Um, so um, one thing you might say is, well, you know, you didn't give us, us enough time, or those photographs weren't very good. Maybe the information isn't there. There's always a million things one can and should worry about. With any piece of evidence I give you for any experiment, you know that the next thing I'm going to do is ask you to tell me why the conclusion might not follow, right? Because that's what it is to, to really be a smart, critical scientist is to think, here's the data, here's the inference, okay, kind of, maybe, sort of, but how might those data still be true and that inference incorrect? How, what other reason might there be? And in this case, who the hell knows, right? Maybe those photographs just aren't good enough, right? So Jenkins did a wonderfully low-tech, clever thing to test that question. He tested Dutch subjects. Who know those people? Dutch subjects look at that array and immediately say, two people, duh. So if you know them, the information is there, OK? Um, so uh, the conclusion is we're not always so great at extracting this very abstract invariant representation of a face if we don't already know that person, if we don't already have lots of experience with them. Maybe we exhaustively learn lots of different ways people look. Now, we can't learn every way they look, but maybe there's some compromise. We learn some of the ways, and we have some ability to generalize from some of the ways, or something like that. Okay. Now, um, so maybe that's part of how we deal with this big problem of image variation, at least for faces. But like most things in this field, um, what I just, Jenkins' experiment is a great experiment. I love that work. It's important. It's a deep insight. But things are rarely black and white in our field. And there's ongoing research, in particular, um, uh, a postdoc in Josh Tenenbaum's lab, who's now writing a paper where he's done different versions of this kind of experiment. And those guys think that Jenkins went overboard with his conclusions, and there are actually quite a range of variations that people can handle. So there's a little bit more of a gray area in some of their work. Okay. Um, nonetheless, it's not, it's not as good as you might expect. 